Ah. Hey. Oh, good evening and welcome to Family Rules. Okay, chapter two. You'll notice I'm speaking in English. That's right, because some of us aren't, don't have English as our first language. So I suppose I better practice. Right. Good news. We've closed the door on uh, anyone else coming in next month because uh, uh, the January course, we're full. Oh, huh? we, we've got uh, people flying in, nevertheless, and Belgians. If there's any Belgians who are driving and they have space in the back of their car, but know, random triple carmelite type ideas <laughs> for, yeah. for, for <laughs> anyone in January, that would have been a good idea. We will, of course, purchase them when you when you get them over here. Just ah. a so tonight... Chapter two, Nick Wood Asperit. Huh? A never ending story. Because when I began writing this, I thought, well, this thought of the nothing just sprung to mind. And obviously, a never ending story, if you watch a movie, read the book, whatever. This this nothing is so sort of absorbing everyone. And I thought, wow, especially obviously if we look at, you know, post-2020 and you look at where we are today, it's like, wow, there's more and more nothing silencing people. Yeah, People are becoming more, so we'd like to think we're, 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 we're shouting out more, but actually there's a lot more voices early on because they've been silenced by the nothing the nothing nowadays being Google and big tech. So it is nice that we can actually you know, get together in a little posse and say hello. And this evening, because when I was writing, I thought, well, I'll be drawing things from nothing. You know what I mean? The blank page. So you've got this blank page, and the result is whatever's come through. <laughs> What was that iPhone 13, Clover? Sunshine. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's me. It's only me, Gabby. Oh, that's all right, Gabby. We all know it's only you because you're the only one speaking over me. So if you just okay. click that little mute button, there you go. I've just muted you. That's wonderful. So an hour. We're going to be quick. You're going to fire questions at me. You've got lots. Yeah, probably couple of things I want to throw up in the air. Uh, any of you interested in Adler's work? Yeah. Now, so just and any firstborns sitting watching? Uh, yeah. Any firstborns? No, just Austin. That's probably why he wanted to kill them all. Right. Uh, any... Any second borns? <laughs> this is a little in-house joke there. Second born. Now, were you second born? Yeah. Did anybody come along after you? Important question. If you were second born, remember, you've been born. Wow. And everything that your elder brother or sister does is so unfair because... Why can't I stay up? They get it. But if your mum and dad had another child, oh, dun, 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 you become the middle child. Or worse, if they had more. But suddenly, that throne that was rightfully yours, which technically you had stolen off your brother or sister just by being born is now stolen again. <gasps> and that's probably why, if there's three of you, and you're the middle one, that's why those two will get on with each other, and you're the troublesome one. Because the eldest thinks, fair enough, you thought you'd stolen my crown, the youngest stole it, Happy days. So the third one being born was revenge over the second one. 
Now, I'm watching a few chuckles here, so so you know who you are. Right? So we're, we're going to sort of dive into a bit of that this evening. I mean, if there's anything coming up you want to share, that'd be wonderful. Otherwise, it's just an hour of me talking. Yeah. Jenny, that's a thoughtful one. What was that one? So I'm the third born, and my brother and sister absolutely hate each other, but I get on with both of them really well. And then my nephew, my eldest nephew and the youngest nephew get on really well, but they all hate the middle one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mad, isn't it? Well, just, yeah. well, when that crown's on the top, see, no, it's not, a, if it was a boy and girl, it can, yeah, and it's about gaps as well and, but it is fascinating. He, he had such a good viewpoint on it. So that when, Nick, I'm going to get you, when you're working with the client, would you ever consider, and this is my, I was having a, a discussion with Andrew today. Yes, Andrew, we know you're a golden child. Yeah, Me too. Number I'm two. the golden baby. Yeah. So I'm first born, very interested in middle children too at the more. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Middle children. See, I I'm last. I'm the last born, but so I'm the baby. Believe it or not. Me too. Uh, time I came along, yeah, I was allowed to just do anything. <laughs> I you know used to finish school, go and look for my mum somewhere. I was only five. Yeah, you know, she'd usually yeah. be bingo. You know, we, we've had that life, Jenny. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So, so anyway, I'm where Nick. You had a question. Yeah, so it seems like the natural response to when the crown gets taken is anger and revenge. Like, how do we learn to do that? Why don't we just be like, oh, lovely, we've got a new sibling. Where has this come from? It's fascinating, isn't it? Because hmm. if I like, I love watching nature. If you just watch nature programs, it's fantastic. Because, you know, the, the mother will come along and you got so much food, or the you know, mum, dad, they drop some food in. And then whoever gets it, you know, will try and try and bring them all up, but then some are a little bit stronger, a little bit, and then by the end, you might end up with three chicks where there was five, or two chicks where there was five. You see what I mean? So it's it is literally survival at the beginning. But this, and you've heard me say it many, many times, if we're not looking for the death in the situation, if we're not looking for death, you're just going to try and fix a client. You see what I mean? No, death overrides. It's a priority. You've been born. You're the miracle. Wow. Now it's up to you to survive. So as soon as another one comes along, there's a threat on your life. You see what I mean? And Adler really was looking at, if we look from an attention position, and there's Jen, number three, get it in, right? <laughs> no, because we're watching with a, a, a little one near us, and you're watching, because the firstborn now could feel displaced. Can you see how that can happen? But naturally, because if you're a mum and you've got three kids, it is impossible for you to give the same amount of attention unless, of course, you've read jelly beans in a jar. And then you say, there's your piece. There's your piece. There. You give it all then on proviso you do as you're told. So suddenly we've got love in a jelly bean jar. You see what I mean? Which is, you can realize it's a difficult path because if the baby one's changing, the baby one's changing. Now, if the other two want to suddenly play something when you're in the middle of it, you have to say it, no, not yet. But the key factor is after not yet, that sounds too big. Are you with me? I mean, I still get it off Lisa today. Oh, well, maybe. Yeah, never going to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh perhaps. Never going to happen. Yeah. Why? Because 
because that's the sort of statement your mother used to say to you or your dad when you were a kid, oh, maybe later, never going to happen. But if you say in five minutes or in 10 minutes, Jen specifically, because baby norms and Charlie's around there somewhere, but if you give them a time and in that time frame, you act upon it, now that is going to teach them trust. And it, be, it, can, it can be difficult, but not impossible. But it's specifics. And if some of you will have read my um, oh, my kids now, now they come with a manual. If you look in kids, we looked at the, the work of Carol Dweck. And Dweck looked at specific feedback. If you want that relationship to grow, the feedback must be specific. Oh, you're wonderful all of the time. Just washes over the child. At 10.30, when you threw a wobbler, I wasn't very happy with you. But at 10.45, you came out of your little tiff. We discussed it. And then we, we had a wonderful day. Can you see what I mean? We're just really get specific. Otherwise, your children very early on, as we have, they learn not to trust you. You see what I mean? So all of the family rules stack up. You're not even four years old. You see what I mean? This is fantastic. So did that help? Uh, where are we at there, Nick? Was that okay? It's death. Death, that's all it's all about. Do we live or do we die? Yeah. Amanda, I checked your website today. Fab, I love it. Right? Make sure we have a natter about that at some point because I like that. And um, uh, da -dee -dee -dee. I've got my book. Any questions? I thought I'd, since it was chapter two, I thought might as well have a look in chapter two. Why not? Anybody? No question. No. Oh, well, I'll just sit here and talk to myself then. Um, anybody? Did Can anybody I... read chapter two? Oh, Jenny, go on then. My, um, so my son was three when I had twins and his behaviour changed hugely when the twins arrived. But now his daughter at four has openly said to me, oh, I don't tell my dad because he's a liar. Yeah, because he promises to do stuff and then doesn't do it. Yeah. So she doesn't trust him at all now. Can you but can you see now when they're growing up and they're meeting the outside world mm. and your key point of trust is broken, you can see that that can lead yeah, you know, down some tricky paths. Yeah. So that that's why it's it's mad, but they're tiny little pieces, but they're huge. But she she was the only child, and then he's had two to somebody else, and now her mum has had one to somebody else. And now the mum's new boyfriend has got two kids as well, so she's getting further and further down the line. Yeah. You can just, and your heart goes out, because obviously because we've got age now, and you yeah. look, and you can see those cracks. Yeah. It's so different watching as a grandparent than as a parent. You can just yeah. see it all. Yeah. But uh, Lisa's uh, eldest granddaughter comes in. She was first, first born, indep independent, like to play with everything. Second born, third born comes. Now, she wants to, when she turns up, the other two, she wants to take Lisa to a bedroom or to the kitchen or anywhere. Your grandma knows you, you got it, haven't you, Jenny? She wants just, just be with me. Yeah. Yeah, she hopes she hope arrives and she goes, can we play in the bedroom as soon as she arrives? Or can we make some cakes? And I yeah. don't see the, the other two. And I'm like, she's like, oh, it's okay. We don't need to see them. We don't need them. <laughs> yeah, well, 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 they, they'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah they're, they're, they're playing with the traffic. But yeah, me sleep, you, they'll be fine. Yeah. Think, wow. Yeah. So and Jenny's having little Jen's having chuckles as well. Just just interesting, just interesting. Yeah. And 
So uh, next, if any Adler, I'll throw that up there. My other area I wanted to, I, I put a little uh, piece on the Facebook link there, was um, entropy. Uh, informational entropy. Ooh. Now there's a, there's probably, there's a few uh, Bowen type people or physical body workers on here as well. That's interesting because I was chatting to Andrew today. Uh, well, we were too. Uh, well, we're on a fast, so we didn't even we, we didn't even get a cup of tea with them. Doing one of those uh, a th do a three day fast every now and again, which is kind of cool. Yeah, and uh, so but I'm probably make it the Friday night eighty hours back in the net. I love it. But when we were looking at this informational entropy, then it's similar on a fasting position because when people chat about fast they think it's just you know <coughs> putting food in bless you if you're not putting food in obviously your system gets a calm and gets it to reboot re-cleanse all of that naturally yeah however what are you taking in what are you reading you see what i mean what are you watching which and that's probably the point i was going to Chase you up with an at some point, Amanda will have a natter or something in 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 the future. With that, It'll be a nice little you know, um, what's these called when people chat on the Zoom things. Anyway, you know what I'm saying. Then you can come along. We'll have a natter. But because I thought, well, if you're not taking any more fuel, you know, solids, liquids in, except a bit of water. But what are you thinking? Who are you having conversations with? What's coming down that TV line? Because all of that will impact your thoughts. And that's why we thought of having a family rules program in January, because what a lovely time to start the year. Everybody, oh, we're going to get slimmer, trimmer, fitter, and all of that. But if you're carrying a lifetime of family rules, bam, there, which that's how I end up checking you out this morning, man, because I was looking at different you know, uh, programs for slim and fit and healthy and stuff. Because we were chatting about how many people are really good at being angry. They're really good at being angry. And they'll feed it around. Now you think, well... Why on earth would you want to feed anger? Just interesting, isn't it? Well, if you're vulnerable, nature again, always watch nature. Nature's fab at this. If you're vulnerable and you get bigger, your primitive brain says, if I'm big, then I'll pose a greater threat, so then I won't be attacked. So it sort of makes sense. But it's, as per usual, it's nonsense. So if it's nonsense, it must be irrational. Yeah. If it's irrational, it must therefore be emotional. And you'll find one of these, bop, sitting in the middle there. So if you can clear it, if it's one of these that's locked in with a family rule, then it gets really awkward. You see what I mean? Because if... Not so much if you're firstborn, but if you're second, third, anywhere, you know, down the pecking order, it can become more difficult because the rule might be your, and now I worked with a client years ago, she was mad, mad. When, when she was at uni, she was slim. When she came back from uni, she became an elephant. I mean, literally in the space of like a month. And I thought, wow, that you go back to uni and come back. When she was at uni, she had her identity. You know, she was herself. But when she came home, she was her mother's big girl because she'd gone to uni. So she literally came, every time she came home, she was the big girl. 
So we had to pop that piece out of there. And that was brilliant because she was suddenly able to be her own identity, no matter which context. You see, where these family rules can get under the skin. And I bless her, she tried, you know, she, you, you, this, you, you. But until she'd popped that piece out, she, she just didn't have conscious, or rather subconscious control. Conscious control is an effort. Subconscious control is a lot easier. Because can you imagine if we were all sitting here thinking, and out, and in, and out. You'd never get a conversation done if you had to keep telling yourself to breathe in and out. And that's why you need subconscious control, because it's easier. You see, you, you're getting me? Yeah. Well, anyway, that was it. So I want to chat about entrop informational entropy. Is anybody interested in informational entropy? I'll, I'll just shut up if you want. Can you, can you describe the word entropy? Because I can't find the translation in here. Oh, that's great. Neither can I. Austin, <laughs> entropy, E N T, ent, R O P Y, entropy. Yeah. I don't know what it is. What? What is it? Oh, brilliant. Oh, that's a good, good question. I think that's quite similar to what Gabby was saying then. So if we think about it, very simply, entropy is what's left over to do the work, right? So how much energy have you got to do the work? Yeah. Now, if we look at informational entropy, where my work's heading, we've got a, a, some new papers out and we'll see when they get published in the new year, hopefully. But um, as they're rolling ahead... I'm looking at, you know, when you say, I've got a lot on my mind. Or you see someone, you can see they've got a lot on their mind. Well, what you're noticing is the system is burning up energy. Does that make sense? Because they're churning, churning. Now, whilst they're busy churning up that energy, it's costing now, when it's in that cost zone, they may lean towards sugars. It's going to sound like a diet night tonight, by the way, sorry. But they've done experiments where they took rats in the bottom of the cage. Austin will chip in now, that's true, yeah. Starved the poor buggers. And then they give them some little exercises to do, you know, to, to gain treats. Now, if they did a, an exercise that ta taxed them more, caused them to have to put more effort in, but they got a better prize versus, you know, not having to do much at all, but for rubbish food, they all opted for rubbish food. Instead of quality, they went for rubbish and quantity. Now, if you think about informational entropy, then, if the information coming in is literally blocking your way forwards, if you see what I mean, your emotional brain will drain you and you'll make poor choices. So, you know, when we say for people to have some me time, you know, oh, I'm having some me time. That doesn't mean a bottle of champagne. It doesn't mean, you know, it doesn't mean a, a pizza and, a, and a, a bottle of drink. What it means or ought to mean is time with oneself. And I, I was just working with a, a client before we came on here and I thought, bless him. I, he's got all the money in the world. Really lovely, lovely chap. But he's going to be alone at Christmas. And he's lonely. Uh, and I've, I've asked Lisa, but she said, no, you can bog off. But anyway, so, 
I'm going to ask John, and I'm going to ask John when we finish. But the, but the thing is, that loneliness is like sort of, it's costing him. Now he didn't come to me because he was lonely. He came to me because he was in pain. But the pain has got nothing to do with anything other than the amount of entropy that his current situation is costing. And I came up with this phrase, and you can maybe coin it into a blog somewhere, which is all or nothing. He's got a family rule of all or nothing. So he's in a relationship, but it's not a full relationship yet. They haven't gone the whole hog, if you see what I mean. Yeah, they're still friends, you know and a holiday and stuff, but they haven't sort of moved in or anything. So because he's all or nothing, his system is just burning up. Because he hasn't got all, therefore he's got nothing. Kind of tragic, really. So I'm giving him a hand you know, over the Christmas. And I said, well, I wouldn't get this sorted by New Year. There's good news because he's in fear of asking the question in case he gets rejected. And I thought, oh, that's all right. I said, that, that's brilliant. So how do you mean? I said, well, at your age, the good news is statistically, there are a lot more women about than there are men. We're, we're usually dead. I said, so there'll be lots of choices. And the goal will be next year to have it with a partner. So that's where we ended our, our conversation about, you know, 40 minutes ago or whatever. And because it was all or nothing and he couldn't see what the root cause was. And the root cause was a family rule. Seeing you can actually have better ways of negotiating. But to have half a negotiation and be stuck there just burns up energy. And that's informational entropy, which we're developing uh, more papers on next year. So does that make sense? You know, when you say we've got a lot on my mind. So if that's a family rule, can that be, do people... Do people understand the family rules differently? Yeah. Because if because sometimes you'll get a member of the family who's like that, but then other family members get married, settle down, all the rest of it. So it's how they determine the family rule, is it? Correct. Yeah. Because remember, the, the pecking order you've come into. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. So are you independent? Yeah. Yeah, and that's what I find. Uh, m most of the guys that connect with me, they tend to be independent. You're an independent thinker. Well done, it's you, yeah. right? my tribe. We're independent yeah. thinkers, right? But the challenge is, then, when you're with a sibling, you can look say, "Eh, <laughs> how the what? Yeah, I mean, are we related? I mean, yeah." You know, you're like flabbergasted it's it's some of the choices they make. Anything? Eh. Or, even worse, if you're discussing an event that happened and you were there... It didn't. And no, it didn't happen. You see what I mean? It's like, what? Unbelievable. And there's Austin with a smug little grin and a hand in the air. Austin! Asked to unmute. I'm asking you to unmute. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So in terms of the all or nothing rule, presumably is this if the, uh, a way that self-sabotage is that if you end up with nothing, that means you must have everything. So if you have it, yeah, you're loving it. Yeah, I know you like that one, Austin. It did spring to mind. Um, if, if you have a look in knots, remember, I think we touched on knots last time out. If you have a look in knots, there's a wonderful little um, piece from uh, Ronnie Lang, Audie Lang, and he said that 
he basically wrote the script of schizophrenics as they were talking. And the, one of the scripts is basically, um, it went along the lines of, I never get what I want. I only get what I don't want. And if I get it, I mustn't have wanted it because I never get what I want. Does that make sense? In a crazy sort of way. And and that's exactly, that's why I'm smiling at Austin there, just nodding. Off. And don't worry, because there's a few therapists on screen now. That thing not make sense. Oh, yeah. if I have nothing, I must now be happy because I've got nothing. And it's all or nothing. There was a guy in the family rules he quoted about the was he'd been millionaire six times, but every time he got to being a millionaire, he then managed to lose all his money. Oh, that, that's, the point of, of that's getting, in um, the saboteur within. I thought you mentioned it in family rules as well. No, I don't think I'd, if I did, okay. but I remember the two, I always call him the two of own man because zit, 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 fantastic. Yeah, two of own man. Yeah, it's the same. All or nothing. Can it just get, just be just happy anywhere? No, got to be everything or it has to be nothing. Now, that's a really sneaky one. To, I mean, we might touch on it in January if it pops up. Because obviously that's going to connect with quality of relationship, quality of life, you know, finance, health. Because it's either all or nothing. Mm, questions? No questions? Oh, yes. There's a finger coming in. Yes. Um, you are tri triggering me. My me? Parent, my parents, all, their, all of their life, they said, we have nothing, so we have nothing to lose. It's the same story. Yeah. It's terrible. It's, it's a dying quote for the whole of the family. Bless. Well, well. how long do you consider keeping it then? I don't know. I don't know. It's just a thought. It gets you thinking, doesn't it? You think, wow. See, and that's the thing with family rules. It, they, until we're in a discussion forum and we can throw them in the air and we just watch where they land. And if you feel that trigger, you think, oh, yeah, and it's if you if you if you tell it that way, uh, the starting this evening you told about death. I am the last born in the family, and the first child has died. Yeah, it connects. Yeah, it's very yeah. strange. Well, I'll tell you what's stranger. All of mine are dead. Yeah. My brothers, my sister, my parents, all gone. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's all, it's, it's mad. I mean, don't be so solemn. I mean, we're just talking about life here. Yeah. Yeah. It just sounds like death. The key is how much more time you put between this moment, yeah, and the next journey. But those imprints are huge. Yeah. No, oh, yeah, good input. Thank you. Is uh, too good to be true rule connected to this? No, yeah, too good to be. It's it, it's the same pattern. Yeah. If if it's too good to be true, it probably is. Yeah. It, it's a similar pattern when people say too good to be true. Yeah. Well, but if you think about how many things come along, what if they're just true what if can something just be true it's a challenge isn't it Think, oh, can't be just true eh? I mean we, we we had a sneaky week away yeah we had a sneaky week away it was only 1500 quid the flight was three three hours ten minutes late we've got 700 quid coming back to us too good to be true
<laughs> eh, cheaper than staying at home. Unbelievable. Amanda, where's she gone? Oh, she's up there. Right there. So is, is the way out of a family just being conscious of it? No, you... no, no. The, the simplest way is just to kill all of your family. Yeah. Uh, but sadly, yeah, they've stopped that nowadays. But um, it, because it's subconscious. Now, Amanda, I'm, I'm assuming you're reading my book, aren't you? Yeah, but I haven't got to chapter two. Well, I've started chapter two. I haven't got into that bit yet. Hang, hang on, what part of... I'm reading your book, but I'm not on chapter two. I mean, what? You're joking. It's my bedtime, it's my bedtime reading. Sorry. Uh, and, and I sometimes fall asleep. Okay. Oh, thank you. Wonderful time to read, that <laughs> is. Yeah. I don't have nightmares. Because <laughs> they're connected to death. And it's that death, but kill all my family. Why I why I didn't I think of that, Andrew? Well done, exactly. Shh. He uh, said, so "You're a dentist. You can do it sneakily with gas or something or whatever chemicals. Uh, just bring them in for a tooth filling." Get it? Oh, never recovered. Um, but Amanda, that the challenge is they go in when, and it's usually pre-verbal. Now, this is a paper I've literally submitted for publication on Sunday night. So I've literally sent it off. But in the new year, when it gets published, I'll, I'll share it and so. But what we're looking at there is pre. You, have you heard the term complex trauma? Yeah. Complex trauma. Well, complex trauma, it basically means childhood trauma or trauma that happened to you pre-verbally, before you could speak. So the reason it's called complex is obviously because it's a very difficult one for them to diagnose because you can't put your hand up and say, oh, when I was two years old, he did that to me or she did. So it's a complex trauma. Does but... that include pregnancy? Sorry? Does that include when you're being in pregnancy? Well, it, it, well, it could for the, the child. Yeah. Yeah. But not for okay. the mum, because obviously, you know, but uh, yeah. So so it's it's any sort of, you can have birth trauma, all of those. But if you think your trauma is really, and I was, was sat chatting all last week on it. If you look at, forget, forget trauma as an, but look at trauma from a, a very simple position. <laughs> if, it, if an antelope or a gazelle, was mauled this morning by a leopard, yeah? It was attacked and survived. If you bump into that same antelope, bless you, whoever's sneezing, if you bump into that same antelope or leopard next, or gazelle next week, they are not booking in to see a psychiatrist or their GP. It's gone. I've been eaten. Sorry? It's gone. Vanished, gone. Now, the reason it's gone is because they're, and this is a key piece that we're working on, is they're free. But don't, don't they shake it off? Don't they kind of... Yeah, 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 it shook off, but it's gone. It's, they're not a whole, then it's, there's no emotional memory. The whole process goes through, yeah, and they're free of it. However, human beings are not. Yeah, we're not. Why? Because we're all in the cage. We're all in captivity. We are the captives. We're not captors. We are captive. So when you're brought up in that family, you're a captive. Virgo, your mum or your dad or you, you the captive, because you're you're so small, you can't run off. You know, you can't fight because you're tiny. So you learn to freeze. And then at about four years old or younger in the UK, they send you to education. So if mum and dad were filling you full of love and hope and all of that, to send you to education, where you can be 
come or learn to be active then? And these freeze responses just stay. And that's where your family rules are trapped in. Yeah. I mean, it's a, just fab. I, I, I love it because when you th attempt it to think of a family rule, the moment you think this way with my, my Dutch colleagues, uh, I had a, a, you know, many discussions because they want to make a list of, and I thought making a list isn't going to help because it's an in the moment piece. You literally have to be listening to your client and listening to where they're talking fuzzy logic, right? I, I think I give an example. I said a very simple one for the a client emailed in. Very simple. My husband has is very, my husband is very open minded. He just has problems relaxing and taking on board hypnosis or any of those talking therapies. Now, can you see it's paradoxical? You with me? The first statement cancel in order for the first statement to be true, the second statement doesn't make sense, and vice versa. You with me? So there must be a family rule sitting. There's your clue. There's got to be a family rule sitting in there. Yeah, with Austin and I, it took about four years. It was trust. Yeah. And now I did love you, you lovely little man. Right? No. Does that make sense? That's right, Nick. That's why you're grinning. Right? It's that trust thing. Now, once you've got the trust thing out of the road, it's easier to move <laughs> and flex. View Austin's hand in the air, Austin. Uh, yeah, the, um, I'm not entirely sure I agree totally. And my, obviously, my lovely mismatch are kicking up at here. Um, the, the antelope is that, as you're saying at the beginning, it's to do with death. So when it would appear, if I, if we, because you're referring, I'm assuming, to Sapolsky's work, this idea of that um, if an antelope or a zebra escapes from the lion, then he's not worrying about, you know, he's not traumatized by the previous incident, but that's because death has been involved, or the very real threat of death was involved. But conversely, the stuff done by Harrow on monkeys, if you remember where the um, babies are removed from their mothers, and then there's this experiment of which does it prefer, nurture or the food source, is that it always goes for the the the, the comfort of the, the fur rather than um the uh, food and so this was this idea of that the the threat of death versus nurture actually the nurture supersedes death in that case because mother's love is higher and oh. in that particular case when they become adolescents those ones that survived are do have a traumatic something similar to adhd or to autism when they reach uh, puberty so there's this idea that actually in the case of um, uh, where there's not technically the, the immediate threat of death, but it's trauma, then animals do remember um, emotional baggage, whereas when actual death is threatened, then they don't. I, I'm, I'm generalizing, but that seemed to be roughly the inference. I got the inference, however, I'm back. Right, and so you, the thing, when you're looking at those little monkeys, right, Right, any little monkeys, right? Being a dad and a granddad, I've seen monkeys. In right now, when they say food or furry, furry equals mother, mother equals I will survive. Food does not equal I will survive. It's that simple. Both they fail to make the argument in that pit. And honestly, I, oh, I could just I could tear some of those. Honestly, I love it. Uh, there's a brilliant uh, movie Lisa and I watch. What's a dark blackfish? Is it blackfish? The documentary. 
if, if you've got a chance over the Christmas, have a look at Blackfish and have a look at it with my eyes, if you wouldn't mind. Because they have a psychologist, the specialist psychologist of marine psychology, who explains quite similar to what Austin was just saying. But if you watch it from my position, you will see it as any other animal, uh, other mammal on the planet. And you can clearly see that, you know, it's just trauma. And you can watch it, honestly. It, it's heartbreaking when you watch it. But um, I think it's about an hour, Blackfish. And and the poor, the, the poor weird, the orca gets killed at the end. They, they kill him. And you think it was tragic because they, they took him out of the wild, brought him in. Try, and I mean, a whale, if you ever seen it, the whale have got the ocean to swim in. They put him in this little tank and then expect him to have sex to breed with these other female whales. When they leave them alone, the females attack him. They, it's absolutely barbaric. But then the, the psychologist gives some sort of stuff of nonsense, blah, blah, blah. And you, you listen to the psychologist and you're thinking, are you actually witnessing what, are you watching the same TV set? You see what I mean? And the psychologist <laughs> playing with the animals. We're just watching clips on screen and you think, you're joking. So, uh, Anne, was it, did we get it? Or was it just a cough? Maybe it was a cough. It was a cough. So, uh, questions. Hey, Jenny, we've been to Liverpool twice in the last month. I've got a question. It's our new, honestly, it's our new <laughs> favourite local. It's three hours down the road, but it's our new favourite local. Love it. Have you, have you been there before? Well, twice. We've only been before twice that. in my life. No, no, no. no. And we'll be back again in January. That's a by the by, but it's just like, wow, I love it. Amazing, amazing place. Right, so, well, the fam what about the family rules, like with my granddaughter, who's got three different houses? Anyway, moving on. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll give you an example. People, because there's a, in the thread there, I've just seen a house pets, Masita, yeah? If you look at house pets, it's there's no di I I cannot see a difference between a house pet and us. And when you look at um, some of the behaviours that a house pet comes out with, you know, I'm I'm a I had dogs all my life, so I love dogs, right? But now you've got people whose dogs are seeing psychiatrists or behavioural specialists. Because they're depressed. And you'll hear people online say, oh, my dog's depressed. Yeah. Not medication. Well, I tell you what, take your dog for a good bloody walk, pull your head out of your backside, and let your dog just have a leader. And I don't mean that. I mean a leader, somebody that's in a dominant position so your dog can go, ha, ah, and relax. If your dog's never allowed to relax and they uh, kept on guard permanent and they and they don't know one mood to the next, the poor little things are like diarrhea, sickness, sad, it just bless them. Masita, you've got a pig. What's the question? <laughs> what's the yeah. question? I saw your hand up, but I can see you. Are you over there? Go on then. What's your question? Well, no, the pig doesn't live in the house anymore. Oh, bless. Oh, <laughs> But, but, so I, the reason I ask about a house pet, the dog used to belong to me. My mum moved down to the farm. The dog now lives with my mother. And now I live with my mother. <laughs> and the dog's depressed. <laughs> There you go. So if we look at it, and again, we're going to apply Adler here, right? So Adler, right? So mum takes dog. So dog is now in house with mum. So dog is first born. And then Masita, the former dog owner, moves into the house. Now the dog is now had its crown stolen. 
Oh, no. Masita, have a look <laughs> at the faces on the screen. I can't see them. Oh, well, well, put it this way. There's an awful lot of people chuckling <laughs> and looking and thinking Masita's not getting this piece. <laughs> it's in chapter two. Read it to your mother. Then she'll ban you. <laughs> yeah, well, I was... Oh, I didn't th uh, okay. Thank you. No problem. Oh, oh, John's got a question. In-house, John. Hello, everybody. I don't think it answered um, Jenny's question about the little the, the grandchild having three different houses uh, and the implication of that. Well, you, moved, you moved on to the dog bit. Oh, right? yeah, it was a lot easier, John. All right. <laughs> right, that's right. Um, <laughs> Sit yourself there. You stood, you stood up. He stood up to come forward to tell me that one. Get down. Right. Hi, right. Obvious... Yes, Jenny. Right. I'm back to you, Jenny. Jenny, yeah. well, the answer, as you probably guessed, is what the... Yeah, exactly. That's what I say. That's mess. I mean... Yeah. I mean, here's Mesita, right? I should... Mesita, I'm hoping you put your hand... Have you got another question? No, your hand's still up. That's all, right? No, sorry. I'll try and get right. it done. So, so if we look at... <laughs> That position Masita just made, right? Yeah. Dog with owner was Masita. Yeah. Dog goes to Masita's mum. Yeah. And have dog. Masita joins. It upsets the dynamics. You with me? Yeah. Now, that's just in a very s simple triangle. Is it three people? Well, 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 three energy sources. Yeah. But then if you take a child and stop bouncing a child around different sources. I, there's one little chap, and bless him, right? If you went to hug him, he'd sooner strangle you. Yeah. Jenny, I know you know this one, right? You love it, right? It's tragic, but, you know, because you're telling care homes and that. And, you know, when you, if you went to show a child affection, they would sooner hit you. Mm. They would sooner lash out. <laughs> right or strangle you or smash the plate why because you attempted to show them affection so why is that you've got to ask the question why it's the same reason a dog will chew up the house same reason because the child is used to being rejected by their parents So when, mm. the parent, when the child has gone to their parent, their mother, their father, or the dog has gone to their owner, the, the owner's been busy, the parents have been busy, so the child has got used to being rejected. Rejection yeah. equals pain. So when you come and you open your arms and you want to love them, their system needs to reject you Otherwise, they will feel pain. Yeah, it's it's, it's tragic when you you watch them growing up, and the the we won't get into it. We won't. We've only got three days, but we will look at a at a later date at um, intimacy. Yeah, because they they grew up never being able to be intimate. Yeah, you know, they they're gonna end up sex workers and stuff, but and. Yeah, it's not intimacy. Because they don't trust. There's no trust. Yeah. I mean, you know, and it is tragic. I mean, we can get, can you see how with family rules, you can get very dark, very quick. It's a blended families, isn't it? All the blended rules and families and houses and stuff. Yeah. It's yeah. fascinating. Mm. Thank you, John. <laughs> <laughs> is, by, by the way he's coming on the course oh dear right austin or oh, jen i think your hand was in the air first hello um so is it as in they'll reject before they get rejected so they'll yeah. do the rejecting so that they don't have you to know what i'm saying jen what are you talking about? you know what we're seeing i'm, I'm just checking <laughs> Uh, I am a cat lover. I, was it, uh, something like that, wasn't it, Jen? You Back. still haven't let that one go. Wasn't that like 12 no, years no, ago? No, no, no. Hi, Jen. I've evolved I'm... a little bit. Hi, Jenny. Jen's having a 
more kids. You got more. You got more children. I keep saying I'm done now. Uh, yeah. Keep going. Yeah. Right. Going. Oh, that's the thing. I'm like, well, if the middle child's messed up, do I just keep going? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <I'm just bad. laughs> two weeks ago, I was two hundred percent done. I'm now hundred percent done. <laughs> gone. Definitely. Well, we're three. Definitely. How's it gone, Austin? Yeah. Um, so what occurs to me is the, um, often with uh, people like Louise Hay and various psychologists, they always talk about that there are fundamentals like fear and guilt and rage, whereas something that occurs to me as you're speaking is that the idea of what is, to me, hints at like a, a kind of a form of revenge, even if it's rejection, it's actually I'll get the revenge in first or pay, you know, then I don't think I've heard that said in other fields they always talk about fear guilt and anger whereas revenge where does revenge come from very simple we're back to ronnie lang they're playing a game they're playing a game of not playing the game so if i tell them that i can see what they're doing i'll be punished and that's why i have to play the game and that's why, because Andrew was telling me that he's probably he's on here somewhere, maybe. He's gone to a, a family wedding at the weekend. Oh, dear. Lots of games and rules at family weddings, folks. Yeah. But he didn't have a black eye or anything, so it wasn't like he'd gone to a northern wedding. Right? <laughs> he's not commenting. That's good. <laughs> but does that make sense? So when, when you think about that, that, Playing the game. If you're, if somebody calls you out, yeah. Very quickly, we all, because we're all human, we all learn to play the game of not playing the game. Does that make sense? That's why you're usually a better therapist or coach or friend to someone that isn't your friend. Yeah. That's why as a barman or a taxi driver or a hairdresser, you make the best therapist. Are you with me? Because you haven't got the... In, in organizations, uh, corporate settings, a CEO is usually effective, at their most effective for the first six months. Because after that, They've built connections. They know, don't say anything to this one on a Wednesday and watch out for her and accounts on Tuesdays and all of the politics they're now part of. And that's why the life expectancy of a, a CEO in an organization is usually 18 months. Because they have to move them around again. Fascinating. So, any questions? No? Well, the time now, ladies and gentlemen, believe it or not, time has gone tick, tick, two minutes left. We've only got time to say, yes, we'll be back next week. <laughs> I, don't, I can't find the uh, to... Put up my hands. I don't find the button. That's all right. When you go like that, I can see it. Go on, Gabby. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, well, you had a, you talked about anger and fear. So um, my family rule is that um, it's not allowed uh, to show anger. And um, if anybody does it with me, um, I get afraid. I speak out. I don't want to make any connection if anybody is aggressive to me as it is uh, a grown-up. When it's children, I can manage it. It's okay. But um, so now I've got a colleague and she's rather angry with me. She's shouting and I don't like it. And I really, um, I, I get sick of it. And I know it's in my system because of my family, because um, in our, uh, in my family where I grew up, it was not allowed to um, argue. It's better okay. not. Because my father, uh, he had a bad experience in, in the war, and then uh, we learned not to, um, to argue. We 
Gabby? Yeah, right, Gabby, the time what? is now 8 o'clock. Yeah. So I'm not going to argue with you, but it's the time. Right. Yes, but bring that in next week. Will you be here I next will. week? Right. Yes. We will open up exactly where you left off next week. Okay, is that all right? Yes. And yes, we'll do you. a bit of chapter three as well. How about that? Okay. That's right. Because if, if any of you get to watch this video online, I'll put on YouTube you know, in the, an hour or whatever. If you get a chance yes. to watch it, rush to the end and you'll be able to see exactly what Gabby's talking about. Yeah. Because it's as you're yes. looking at the screen, it's up on the top right. That's the only problem she actually has. It's not a family rule. She likes to think it is. Yeah. But it's actually just, just just an emotional memory of it just jamming it. Yeah. So uh, we'll yes, that next week. How about that? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. No right then. Bye bye. Bye bye.